Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the July 8th, 2024 regularly scheduled meeting of the Rockingham County Planning Board, which I now call to order. Let the record show that there's a quorum present to conduct county business tonight. At this time, the chair calls upon Corey Scott for our invocation. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, grateful to gather in this planning board meeting, grateful for the opportunity to serve the community, and we are grateful for the staff that helps prepare all the materials for us so that we can review with fairness, with equity, and with uh, wisdom and knowledge the material that we need to cover. And we pray for thy spirit to help us. We pray that we'll be courteous and kind and, and considerate and find ways to blend the needs of the state laws, the county, and the needs of the citizens. And this we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Scott. <clears throat> Next item is adoption of the agenda. I make a motion to adopt the agenda as written. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the agenda as written. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. There's no opposition, so the agenda is adopted. The next item is approval of the meetings for the June 10th, 2024 meeting. I move that we approve the uh, minutes from the June 10th meeting. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the minutes of the June 10th, 2024 meeting. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign, there's no opposition, so the uh, minutes are approved. This hearing is a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearing. That means it is like a court hearing. State law sets specific procedures and rules concerning how this board must make its decision. These rules are different from other types of land use decisions like rezoning cases. The board's discretion is limited. The board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. A quasi-judicial decision is not a popularity contest. It is a decision constrained by the standards in the ordinance and based on the facts presented. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standards, not personal preference or opinion. Participation is limited. This meeting is open to the public. Everyone is welcome to watch. Parties withstanding have rights to participate fully. Parties may present evidence, call witnesses, and make legal arguments. Parties are limited to the applicant, the local government, and individuals who can show they will suffer special damages. Other individuals may serve as witnesses when called by the board. General witness testimony is limited to facts, not opinions. For certain topic, this board needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. These topics include projections about impacts on property values and projections about impacts of increased traffic. Individuals providing expert opinion must be qualified as experts and provide the factual evidence upon which they base their expert opinion. Witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. At this time, we will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony. Uh, we have one speaker signed up, Mr. Clark Davidson. If you'll come forward, please. Ma'am, did you want to, were you going to speak tonight? No. no. Okay. Please place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you shall present to the Rockingham County Planning Board on the matter at hand shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Okay. You, uh, you may now go to the podium. Uh, you may be seated because we're, uh, uh, protocol uh, indicates we need to hear from staff first. Mr. Cochran. Mr. 
Mrs. Talbert and everyone else. Hey, it's good to see y'all. I hope you're doing okay. Um, might feel like we're having a little bit of Groundhog Day going on here, but um, this is our <coughs> excuse me fourth new uh, proposed cell tower for the year. Um, this is case 2024-16. The applicant is Gen 7 in coordination with Verizon Wireless. Wireless. Uh, this property is located, it's on Sandy Cross Road, but there's going to be an easement placed from Miller Chapel Road to access the tower, so we signed it a new address point. Simpsonville Township, um, a special use permit for a new wireless tower. This is a vicinity map. Uh, this is the, the entire parcel. If you can see on the projection and perhaps in your packet, the two dots within the striped area on the northern side, mm -hmm. the dot to the, slightly to the east is uh, the approximate tower location. Uh, I've got a slide for that. It is in the troublesome creek watershed, but this is an, an allowed use and poses no, um, uh, is not subject to any real standards of the ordinance. And there's the <clears throat> approximate location of the tower. Uh, I pulled up the site plan because I did want to make <clears throat> one point. I caught in my staff report under six staff findings and recommendations. Uh, recommendations C. Uh, additionally, staff recommends conditional approval of an engineered fall zone of 137.5 feet. That was the last tower that we looked at. I just wanted to clarify that for the record. The uh, engineered fall zone for this one as demonstrated in the letter that's in the packet is actually 100 feet. So the fall zone will be total 110 feet. Um, but I brought the site plan up so that you could see that we're uh, well beyond that as far as setbacks from nearby property lines. There are no structures within the fall zone or anywhere near it. So I just wanted to make that point. <clears throat> We did our usual that we do with these types of permit applications. We go through our extensive checklists of uh, materials and requirements and things that we need. They've all been received. Um, they, they're satisfactory and look good. Um, therefore, uh, planning staff feels like this is a perfectly reasonable request, uh, especially given the area where it's located and the lack of general service there. Um, site plan looks good. It was revered, reviewed and approved by Atlantic Technologies as far as construction drawings and structural analysis. Um, a balloon test was conducted and there is a record of the balloon test. Um, I feel like it, it meets all the uh, standards as mentioned uh, in the RA, not HIRA, but the RA zoning district. I need to correct that too. Any additional permits that might be required from DEQ or DOT or anything like that, of course, will apply. Um, and I mentioned the um, fall zone specifically for these four reasons to make sure that we take all of these into consideration before we consider a vote on the matter. I will be happy to answer any questions. Were there any uh, calls objecting to? We got one inquiry call. Yeah, inquiry, yeah. yeah. Out of all the four towers that we've had, I think we've had maybe one or two inquiry calls on all four, so um, no concerns from any citizens. Any questions from the board for Mr. Cochran? Okay, thank you, Lynn. Uh, I'm gonna back this up to the site plan, but we okay. can play with the maps if we need to. Before we uh, proceed any further, <clears throat> uh, I neglect to ask if any member of this board has a familial, financial, or any other interest in this project. So as to create a conflict of interest. Oh. There are none. Okay, Mr. <coughs> Davidson. For the record, please state your name and address. It's in my address is 2538 Manor Walk, Decatur, Georgia, 30030. Long, I'm here long, tonight. Long way from home tonight. Yeah, that's part of the business. <laughs> um, I'm here tonight representing Gen 7 Towers and Verizon Wireless on uh, 
requesting a recommendation of approval for this uh, new tower location. Uh, special use permit 2024-16. Uh, it appears we meet all the uh, requirements for the uh, zoning ordinance. We have recommendation of approval from staff and also from the third party consultant. As uh, Mr. Cochran stated, we do have a uh, engineered fall zone letter to uh, fall well within the requirements. And the, um, uh, the one setback where we are closest, the proposed structure is 285 feet with a 10 foot lightning rod for a total of 295 feet. And we are, I think, 306 feet um, and a few inches away from that nearest property line. So even though we're a little bit short from a, the standard fall zone, so we have the engineered letter, um, we are still at least a tower height away from that property line, and the adjacent property is owned by our same by the same landowner. Is our uh, co-location going to be permitted? Oh, okay. We always like to ask that question. Yes. It's there are instances where co-location is not <coughs> a preference of some applicants for, like Duke Energy, for example, mm -hmm. for private communications, that kind of thing. Right. Or, um, the standard cell phone industry nowadays, it's pretty much a requirement everywhere you go unless it's a, uh, a very special small tower, small installation where it just isn't feasible. But no, this, this will be built to accommodate multiple carriers. Okay. And I believe on the engineering drawings, they even list out the various heights where they can uh, be installed. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Davidson? I do. Um, I've just got a, a few questions here. Um, first of all, um, how many customers do you think will be affected by this tower? Um, and I'm referencing the um, plots pre and post um, RSRP coverage. And can you um, give us just an idea of what the tower is going to do for the local citizens? I, I can't speak to the number of people that are in that area or on the traffic counts that would be driving by. Mm -hmm. um, but what I can tell you is where you see the improved coverage, the people in that area will have significantly improved coverage in their homes and in their vehicles. Okay. Um, and the property owner, um, you said that um, the property, is that the property like just northeast is owned by the same owner as well? Yes. Okay. So, so it's a little bit on the north side and it kind of comes around the east side. Right. Um, and then a follow-up to that. Um, how did you arrive at the, the location of it? It looks to be, it's a large piece of, it's a large parcel. Um, and it looks like the, the tower is in like an upper quadrant of that. Is there some specific reason why that was, why it was located where it is? I think uh, I did not do the land acquisition on this one. Mm -hmm. I know it's always a negotiation with the landowner on where they are willing to um, lease the property mm -hmm. and where we can meet the zoning requirements. And as you go deeper into that property, you're going to be running in. I think you'll be getting closer to the uh, property lines that run north south on either side. Mm -hmm. So trying to find a place that could work well to, at a minimum, be tower height away from that north property line and meet the 110% uh, tower height setback from the other property lines. So the engineered fall letter, um, it applies in any direction, of course, 
but just trying to find a, a place that works for the landowner and works to meet the zoning ordinance. And I, you know, I don't think I've, uh, as many of these as we've heard, I don't think I've asked this question before. So it appears that um, the spot where the tower will be located or the position of it um, is the, the photographs that we see look to be farmland. Um, will the owner still be able to utilize uh, a piece of that or is yes. it? Okay, so he'll, so. Yes, they, no. so there will be a. Yeah. Um, 75 by 75 fenced mm -hmm. compound mm -hmm. and he can farm all around that right okay so you're not really taking up that much land even uh, though no. the fall zone is is pretty wide but yeah, right and it. the fall zone will go uh 100 111 feet out from the center of the tower and they have good sales service while he's farming that's right here you go I would, I would ask to Any other questions for Mr. Davidson? Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> this appears to be another <clears throat> installation for um, building up infrastructure or better communications so that people don't have to hide in their bathroom to use the cell phone or go outdoors. They'll be able to use it in their living room. Or stand on their head. Can I entertain a motion? Yes, we'll entertain a motion for approval of this project. I motion to approve the special use permit based on the reasonableness determinations that are included herein, including any additional conditions that may have been discussed and agreed upon incorporated into this motion to be included in the minutes of the board order. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve this application. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. There's no opposition, so the plan is uh, application is approved. Moving right along, we have no new business, uh, but we have old business, uh, which involves approval of the board order for the last cell tower we approved at the previous month's meeting. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the board order SUP 2024-15-1A towers. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve a board order SUP 2024-15-1A towers. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, like sign, there's no opposition. The board order is approved. And all that remains is a motion to adjourn. So moved. A motion has been made, seconded, and thirded to adjourn this meeting. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. There's no opposition. We are adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.